In this video, we're going to give you an insight into how much professional badminton players make from the top 100 in the world to the world number one. Yeah, we have two aims for this video. One, for it to be really interesting to people who are curious about the money. And two, for it to be informative for any players or parents who are making decisions about a possible career in badminton. We'll be going through all of the different ways players make money and how much, and we think you'll be surprised at what we share. So let's get straight into it. So we're gonna start with players ranked from 51 to 100 in the world, as unfortunately, if you're below 100, you really don't make much money. And for context, the 100th best male footballer in the world, according to The Guardian, is Pierre-Emil Hoiberg, who earns $6.5 million a year in wages alone. And the 100th best women's tennis player in the world, Anna Schmedlover, has earned over half a million dollars just in prize money. And yes, we're going to give the amounts in US dollars in this video, because we have a worldwide audience, and dollars are more well known than our British pounds. So, our first income source is prize money. We've taken the average prize money from players ranked 51 to 100 in all five events, and this was $2,053 a year. And at this level, doubles and singles work out pretty similar, despite doubles players getting less prize money per tournament because they have to share it. Yeah, and the highest earning players were women's doubles pair Tang and Ng, who each earned $20,676 in 2022. Now our second income source is getting paid to play in a league. Not many people talk about this or how much they get paid, but we get a lot of questions on it. And here we're talking mainly about the European leagues, but we'll get on to the big money leagues like the Indian Premier League later in the video. Yeah, the European leagues is where our experience lies, as we've been lucky enough to play in five leagues across Europe over the last nine years. And we can tell you that most players between 51 and 100 in the world can expect roughly $300 to $500 per match. At this level, most players play in a club and sometimes more than one club. So let's say a player plays 12 matches in a year, which is about average. That's a minimum of $3,600 and a maximum of $6,000. And this is usually all profit because clubs typically pay for your travel, accommodation and food. Yeah, now the next revenue stream many players may have at this level is part-time jobs. We've both had our fair share of these over the last 10 years. And the income from these can range from as little as $0 a year to $10,000 a year, depending on what the job is and how many hours you work. And of course, whether you actually need a part-time job depends on other financial support you get, which brings us nicely onto our next revenue stream, sponsorships. Based on this ranking range, we're looking at anywhere from $0 to, let's be crazy and say $10,000 a year, if someone is very lucky, has negotiated very well, or they're just very marketable for one reason or another. And you can also get financial support for various other things, such as studying, which is the route we and many others go down, or for being in the army in countries such as Germany or Singapore. So, based on these figures, that gives us a minimum total income of $5,653 a year, and a maximum of $28,053 a year. However, that's not all profit. Far from it, but we'll get onto the expenses later in the video. Right, so now we'll follow this same structure for those ranked 33 to 50 in the world, and we'll get onto why it's 33 in particular in a minute. We'll speed through this as it's fairly similar to what we've just covered. So firstly, the prize money is more, as you would expect, increasing from an average of $2,053 a year to $8,159 for singles players and $6,481 for doubles players. The highest earner in this category was Jong Nya Ung, ranked 34 in mixed doubles, who earned $77,293, but she's also ranked 5 in women's doubles, where she's earned a lot of prize money. So yeah, remember, those that play doubles and mixed doubles can earn a lot more. And for reference, our next highest earner only earned $16,952. Yeah, unfortunately it wasn't us, as we're currently ranked 41 in the world and we're bringing the average down, only earning $3,000 each from prize money this year. Wah, wah, wah. Now, for club money, you're looking at anywhere between $400 and $1,300 per match. Of course, this rate will depend on the player, as for example, a very good women's singles player who can also play women's doubles is often very sought after in the European leagues. Yeah, so again, using an average of 12 matches, that's a minimum of $4,800 and a maximum of $15,600. Okay, next, as players climb higher in the rankings, you'd expect them to do less part-time jobs because they get more money from other revenue streams. But because financial support really varies from country to country, which we'll get onto later, 
We'll keep this at a minimum of $0 and a maximum of $10,000. And sponsorships will also keep the same, which is a minimum of $0 a year, which can definitely happen. Like five years ago, we were 38 in the world and received nothing at all from sponsorships and a maximum of $10,000 a year. Again, this all depends on your results and your marketability. So based on these figures, that gives us a minimum income of $12,959 per year if you're a singles player or $11,281 per year if you're a doubles player and a maximum of $43,759 again if you're a singles player and $42,081 if you're a doubles player. Okay, now it really gets interesting and it might well surprise some of you. We're into the top 32 in the world and this is important as it means you're pretty much guaranteed entry into all of the big tournaments. And as well as being the events that everyone wants to play, these also come with much higher prize money. For example, in the Super 1000s, you can lose in the first round and you still get a nice $1,200. Again, for some context, this is very small compared to tennis, as reaching the last 32 in singles at Wimbledon gets you a whopping $147,600. That's more than double the winner gets at the All England. Anyway, the average prize money for players ranked 11 to 32 increases to $25,275 for singles players and to $15,498 for doubles players. That's more than doubled. And the highest earner in this ranking range was Shi Yuki from China, earning a very nice $77,175 this year, and he only played six tournaments. Okay, moving on to club money and sponsorships, and this is where the money starts to ramp up. Because of this, we're going to assume that most people inside the top 32 in the world don't have a part-time job. Generally, these players won't be playing as many club matches, but when they do, their rate will be a lot higher. So here, we'll reduce the average number of matches to 8, but increase the rate to between $600 and $2,000 per match, which equates to a minimum of $4,800 and a maximum of around $16,000 a year. Now, so far, we've mainly been talking about European leagues, but let's not forget about other leagues, such as the Indian PBL or the Malaysian Purple League. Rather than running over many months, these leagues happen over a few weeks and can be very lucrative. For example, in the PBL in 2019, Lee Chuk Yu got $61,000 and he was ranked 28 in the world at the time. And if you think $61,000 for three weeks is a lot, wait until we go into how much you can earn if you're top 10 in the world. So that gives you a minimum of $4,800 a year, probably if you're closer to the 32 ranking. You don't play many club matches or you're just not very good at negotiating. And a maximum of $77,000. As well as getting into the big tournaments, 32 in the world is also an inflection point for you to start earning good money from badminton brands like Victor and Yonex. And being in these tournaments also makes you more attractive to other sponsors too because there's more media exposure. Yeah, of course, we don't know actual figures here as players' contracts aren't public, but we'd estimate anywhere between $4,000 if you're around the 32 ranking, up to $50,000 a year if you're around 11 in the world. Of course, this could be higher if a player had multiple sponsors and was very marketable in their country. So, based on these figures, that gives us a total minimum income of $34,075 a year if you're a singles player or $24,298 if you're a doubles player and a maximum of $152,275 for singles and $142,498 for doubles. Now, on to the top 10 in the world. So firstly, as you'd probably expect, the prize money is significantly more here. If you're a singles player ranked between 5 and 10 in the world, the average earnings in 2022 was $66,194. And this more than doubles to $149,375 if you're ranked between 1 and 4. Now this average has been increased by Victor Axelsson, the current world number 1, who has won 7 tournaments this year. Although 2 were the world championships and Euros where there is no prize money. And this helped him to earn $284,125. This doesn't even include the World Tour Finals, which is currently being played, which if he won, could earn him another $120,000. No wonder he could charter a private ambulance plane when he got COVID, so that he could isolate at home and prepare for the Olympics. But maybe it's the things like that that helped him to win the Olympic gold. Now this is where you can see a huge difference between singles and doubles. So if you're a doubles player ranked between 5 and 10 in the world, the average earnings were $30,810 
and then this increases to $70,384 if you rank between one and four. That is half the amount of singles prize money. So maybe it's time to make a singles comeback. Maybe. But of course, those that have won a lot of tournaments, like Zheng Siwei and Huang Yao Chong, have still done very well, earning over $175,000 each so far. Although, remember the 100th male footballer earns more than that in a week. Okay, let's move on to club matches. And for players ranked in the top 10, we'll actually say a minimum of $0 here, as some players don't need to play these at all. But for those who do play, they'd probably be getting a minimum of $15,000 a year. And the highest we've ever seen anyone getting for a league was in the PBL, where both PV Sindhu and Tai Tzu Ying earned $94,500 each for three weeks. Yeah, we'll assume that they didn't need to play in any other leagues that year. Now for sponsorships, and this is where it goes crazy. Brands fight for these players and are willing to pay the big bucks. Again, this massively depends on a player's reputation and how much of a following they have, both as a badminton player, but also on social media. For example, PV Sindhu has 3.5 million followers on Instagram. So according to the GigaPay website, she could charge over $10,000 per post. Yeah, and this is probably one of the biggest reasons Sindhu was 13th on the Forbes list for the highest paid female athletes in 2019, where she earned a whopping $5 million from sponsorships. For this reason, we're going to put $6 million as the maximum per year from sponsorships, as this was the most accurate public information we could find. And if you're not quite a global superstar, but still in the top 10 in the world, like our friend Mark Lamsus, as he won't mind us saying, then unfortunately, you're not going to be making millions in sponsorships. So we'll include a minimum of $30,000 a year. And again, all of this will depend on if you have just one sponsor or several like Tai Tzu Ying. So based on all of these figures, if you're ranked five to 10 in the world, you'd have a minimum income of $96,194 a year if you're a singles player, or $60,810 if you're a doubles player, and a whopping maximum of $6.16 million for singles and $6.12 million for doubles. This increases again if you're ranked one to four in the world, with a minimum of $179,375 for singles and $100,384 for doubles, and again, a huge maximum of $6.24 million for singles and $6.16 million for doubles. But that's not the full story, because some players don't get to keep a lot of their money. So let's go through that now. So first we have expenses. Let's look at what life as a badminton player costs. Here's a list of things players in each ranking range would generally have to pay for. Of course, this is a generalization, and we're assuming things like everyone inside the top 100 will get free rackets and kit, and that a lot of players below the top 50 in the world will be unlikely to get much funding from their national associations. Obviously, this is different in each country, where some players might get, say, eight tournaments funded, and others might only get two or three. Yeah, for example, England have a new structure where to get the top tier of funding and get all of your tournaments paid for, you need to be achieving this level of tournament results and be ranked in the top 100 for singles or top 25 for doubles. And of course, as players get higher up the rankings, they're more likely to receive more funding from their national association and even get a yearly salary, meaning that they make more profit overall. And to give you an idea of what tournaments cost in a year, here's exactly what we spent being ranked 41 in the world, so playing a mixture of higher and lower level international tournaments. So now you know what players might have to pay, but is there anything else? Well, of course there's tax which needs to be paid, unless you live in a tax-free country. And also in some Asian countries, the players have to give a percentage of their prize money back to their association. Yeah, that's an interesting concept. And also, some players are restricted with what sponsors they can work with. Sometimes, if you're part of the national team, you're not allowed certain private sponsorships. And this has led players to go independent and even caused some fallouts in the past. But overall, like in any sport or job, badminton is well paid when you're right at the top. But it's unfortunate that this is only at the top 10 or top 32, however you look at it. But it is something, and we hope the money in sport can continue to grow in the future. Yeah, after all, if you won the All England in 2005, like our coach Nathan Robinson, you only got $3,500 each, which is a tenth of what it is now. So if you want to support our mission of growing the sport around the world by making lots more YouTube videos like this, then please consider supporting us on Patreon. Yeah, for those who don't know, Patreon is our exclusive Badminton Insight community, where we have an exclusive podcast we analyse a match of a Patreon member once a month and we have lots of competitions. 
Yeah, we also analyse our own matches on there, which a lot of you have asked for. And we're doing a Christmas quiz in a couple of weeks. So if you like the sound of all of that, for the price of a cup of coffee a month, then we'll include a link in the description below to our Patreon. Yep, and if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like, smash the subscribe button if you haven't already, and we'll see you in another one very soon. Bye.